these three cards are way better than you think. Both Proliferate and Infect go hand in hand to give you a lot of value, especially if you have a load of value permanents in play that care about having counters on them. Pentad Prism is a great example, making our spells close to free if we proliferate it every time we cast a card. Similar ideas work with Everflowing Chalice and every non-basic land in the deck. The only win condition in this deck is Infect. Give the opponent 10 Infect counters is lethal, meaning we have to proliferate a lot. But with the combination of Weather the Storm to delay the game and loads of mana, comboing with this deck is easier than you think. My Discord server recommended me to play this deck in the popper format, so that's what we're going to be doing today to try out its true power. To start off the first round, we have a great opening hand with a load of mana and some card draw. I start off the game with a Peat Bog, a land I didn't even know existed until today, and that's because it enters tapped with two counters on it, and you can remove a counter to add two black mana. Pretty insane with proliferate. The opponent starts off the game with a tapped artifact land showing their own affinity, and as we have the Infectious Inquiry in hand, I want to give the opponent a poison counter before I attempt to proliferate anything. Our hand is looking exactly how we want it to look, so let's just pass back the turn and hope they don't hold up Metallic Rebuke. The opponent just plays a land and a Chromatic Star and passes back exactly what we want them to do, as this means they don't have any interaction up. To start off the turn, I play my Pentad Prism for two colors of mana so that it comes into play with two counters and then I decide to pass the turn. Now I don't know why I actually did this, I think it's probably because I thought I played my land, but the experimental augury is an instant, so I'm holding up on their turn. Despite this, the opponent takes a slow line and just casts a deadly dispute and a 1-1 creature that does nothing. Now we can experimental augury, we do find a land and can proliferate three things, and then we can use infectious inquiry again, finding a fourth land and another augury. The opponent shows that they clearly have a load of Galvanic Blast and Removal in hand because the Affinity deck is designed to beat Creature decks and not Combo decks. But now with two 2 mana Proliferators in hand, we can do some cool stuff with Weather the Storm. First I play the land and use the plan, then we can proliferate 5 things, finding an Augury off the top. Because our Pentad Prism got an extra mana, we can Augury, which finds us another Augury. And now we can do Augury Weather the Storm and set up for a kill next turn. After passing back the opponent yet again just as a load of affinity shenanigans that would be good against a creature deck, but not our combo. Finding an Everflowing Chalice off the top is quite nice here as if we didn't have enough mana already, now Everflowing Chalice is going to make our proliferate extra extra value. Now we can Augury, find an Infectious Inquiry, proliferate a load of things, and then follow up with a draw 3 proliferate insight. Now the problem is, we then Infectious Inquiry and leave the opponent at 9 Infect. So now we've got to pass back the turn and hope they can't kill us. Surprisingly, the Affinity player who didn't really cast anything all game continues to not really cast anything and they just lose the game because we have the last Infect in hand. Before we go into the next game, I just want to say if you enjoy my content, please don't forget to subscribe as some people forget to click that button and it supports me a lot and over 70% of you aren't clicking it. To start the next game, we've got a decent hand, we just need to draw something that we want to proliferate off the top. Well that wasn't that difficult, let's play a turn 1 Pentad Prism with this Lotus Petal so next turn we can start proliferating. The opponent continues to just untap and cantrip like every affinity player does almost every game, but now we can really start getting some value, but first I want to give the opponent a poison counter. And after giving them a poison and drawing two, they untap and do nothing. With the opponent on a slow plan, I'm going to do a slow plan, let's proliferate once and ship it back. If they do have a destructive spell for the Pentad Prism, we can Augury using the last two counters. The opponent finally puts some pressure on the board, not holding up Metallic Rebuke, but maybe something like Pyroblast. I start off the turn with an Everflowing Chalice which resolves, and then I use my plan, but the opponent uses Red Elemental Blast. Now because of the ramp of proliferate, we can now augury and then have 4 mana available to us. We can either weather the storm or inquiry, but I decide to go for inquiry because I want to kill the opponent and they don't have a lot of pressure on the board. Now what is a lot of pressure is double galvanic blast and then attacking me down to 2 and then holding up the most obvious metallic rebuke I have ever seen. Now I think I took a really bad line, I use Pentad Prism and then I cast the Insight despite having the read that they have Metallic Rebuke so then I can't pay and have to weather the storm to survive. I think it would have been much better to use cheaper spells in my hand to try and draw more cheap spells to finish off with weather but who knows. But it seems to be like it didn't matter because the Metallic Rebuke would have got us anyways with two lands off the top. 
Going into game three, decent opening hand on the play with mana, things to proliferate, and ways to draw cards. The game starts off slow with just hitting our land drops and the opponent playing a chromatic star, so now we can give them a poison counter, and with his augury off the top, we can start proliferating and gaining value. It's a blessing how slow the affinity deck is, because again, they just pass back and do nothing, so now we can use our augury. Here I just take a fourth land drop, and now we can pass back with a load of spells looking to cast on later turns. The opponent uses a thought cast, and a Reckoner's Bargain to draw up to 5 cards. Now I have to say, with the opponent throughout all 3 games essentially casting nothing on early turns, I was finding it quite concerning how difficult it was to combo with this deck, despite having mana, spells in hand, and whatnot. So here I use Mystical Teachings to find another way to proliferate to set up for the next turn, but definitely feels rough going into a format that doesn't really do much until turn 5, especially with no removal. The opponent follows up with a Chromatic Star and two creatures to put 6 power on the board and put a little bit of pressure on us, especially if they have a Galvanic Blast. Now the biggest problem as I cast my spells here is I don't have a Pentad Prism or an Everflowing Chalice in play. This makes proliferating really awkward. Yes, I do have the lands that I can proliferate and I'm slowly ticking away at the opponent's life total, but it's still a very slow game plan and something to keep note of. After gaining a billion life with Weather of the Storm, they follow up with a Goblin Shaman, which can destroy my Lotus Petals, but we can just prologue to Phyresis in response. Now the opponent gets in for 6, and we've got to try and combo them. With 2 lands off the top, we do have a rough start, so now we got an Inquiry to see what we can find. With another Inquiry off the top, I was feeling some hope, but then finding more mana sources off the top, it was making things look really rough for me. It was one of those spots I was so tilted I forgot the Goblin Shaman was on the table, so I just cast the Everflowing Chalice and it got destroyed. The opponent kills my Everflowing Chalice, kills my Pentad Prism, attacks in for 7, and now I need to top deck. Yup. Okay, we do have the Mystical Teachings in the Graveyard, which we can flash back for 6 mana, but that is gonna cost us 2 lands. From here, I can get an Augury out of the deck to try and get some good card selection and also get back the mana that we sacrificed. I decided to take Deep Analysis over Infectious Inquiry to draw more cards to try and find the kill faster as they only have 7 power on the battlefield. The opponent gets us down to 14 life after drawing a load of cards and now we top deck another Augury, so things are looking kind of hopeful. The Augury finds an Infectious Inquiry which we can cast, but the opponent has a Metallic Rebuke to stop it from resolving. Now we have to just say go after playing our land, and the opponent puts us down to 7 and plays another Gorilla Shaman. With the Weather the Storm off the top of the deck, we can try and gain a lot of life, but first we got a deep analysis. Finding a Pentad Prism and a land, I wanted to get more information on what I'm going to be working with, so I flash back deep analysis. But I completely overlooked the fact that deep analysis cost 3 life and would put me on 4, so they follow up with a Galvanic Blast, and now we have to Weather the Storm. With Deep Analysis resolving, they don't have a counterspell, so we can proliferate again and hope that they can't kill us here on this turn. The opponent casts a load of spells, but eventually attacks in passes, and we give them the infect counter to win the game. Now hold on a second there, Harry. You made so many mistakes this match. First one to highlight, you didn't cast a cantrip when you were gonna miss your land drop. That was a big mistake that could have cost game one. Then there were so many sequencing errors throughout the match that could have easily cost you cards and also lost you the game. Yes, I completely agree, this deck is very, very hard to play, but to highlight, to even have a chance to win this match, my opponent had to put no pressure on the board, literally no pressure, and I still almost lost because of burn. That's a big problem to me, and I think even sequencing errors can't hide the fact that this deck clearly lacks some power in this match. And the sad thing is, this was the only win I had in 5 matches of Magic the Gathering. Despite comboing my opponent and dismantling them game 1, both games 2 and games 3, I lost to the gate pump trick because my deck just couldn't close off the opponent. I was finding it a very hard time to avoid flooding out by drawing a load of lands or unwanted mana sources, and even got paired against decks like Burn, which just completely dismantled us as again. We only could beat Affinity because they really weren't putting pressure on the board. Did I like this deck? No. Does it have the potential to be good? Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if I made 60% of the wrong decisions, but that happens when I'm trying to showcase new decks for you guys. That's about it for this one though. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out this video because YouTube thinks you'll like it.